Hey, you freaks and ghouls, slashers and psychopaths, scaredy cats and scaredy dogs. I'm your horror host of the motherfucking most, the Headless Glen, and welcome to Twisted Continuities, where I discuss the stories and powers within the Twisted Little franchise. This is kind of an episode of Graveyard Grumblings, sort of anyways, and man, it's been a while since he, I mean rather, since I posted, so... Hopefully, I'm going to pick up the slack around here. What? Give me back to my channel, you filthy rodent bitch. I thought you being in control was just a dream I had after eating that Sriracha Maya steak wrap last night. Why are you using my channel in the first place? On my channel's second anniversary of old days. Sh shut up, just just shut up, alright. Jeez, back on topic, a couple Twisted Metal trailers came out a little bit ago and weren't particularly great. In fact, I say they were downright unfunny and uninspired, lacking all aspects one generally associates with the series. That coupled with the fact Glenn, I mean, p along with the fact I actually scaled the Versal a while back, made me feel like it was best not to just cover the story, but the powers of this franchise as well. You lying little. For starters, this will be a video series, as the intro suggested, titled Twisted Continuities. Going through the franchise's different canons, in terms of story as well as power, because unlike what Death Battle and Versus Battle Wiki think, the different canons matter when in regards to the power of the franchise as a whole, not to mention the characterization of the contestants. I also won't be covering Small Brawl, at least not initially, given that while I find it somewhat interesting, there isn't enough I personally find notable in terms of scaling or story. If I had to, I'd guess it was from street level to wall level in terms of power, and then the story is just pretty straightforward. What about completion, Ral? You lazy fuck. Hell, if you just give me back control, I'll do it. What do you know about completion, Glenn? Your first episode of Graveyard Grumblings was to tell people you weren't going to cover... You know what? Why am I even talking to you? <clears throat> For this video and the consecutive videos... I will not be going over Calypso in terms of power, at least where it isn't necessary, as I definitely would need an entire video to cover just him and his incarnations alone. These episodes, unless stated otherwise, will be specifically covering the power of the contestants. With that being said, let's discuss the continuities we will be discussing in this series before we start hearing more from people who should no longer be there. Bitch! I will go ahead and get out of the way what I consider the realities that each of these games take place in. These, in chronological order, are the Classic Continuity, the Black Continuity, the Head-On Continuity, and the 2012 Continuity. Starting with the first continuity within the franchise, we have what I call the Classic Continuity, which is what we are covering in the next video of this series. For the Classic Continuity, we have the first four games ever released for the franchise, that being Twisted Metal, Twisted Metal 2, Twisted Metal 3, and Twisted Metal 4. The people in charge of the franchise initially, that being Single Track, were taken off the franchise after Twisted Metal 2 due to contractual disputes and didn't return till Twisted Metal Black, which led Twisted Metal 3 and Twisted Metal 4, which were worked on by 989 Studios, to feel a bit disjointed from the original duology. Not just due to the feeling of the gameplay and tone being different, but also with the fact there were some significant lore changes, mainly in regards to Twisted Metal 4. This is actually noted in the history section of the 2012 Twisted Metal Brady Games Guide, specifically stating on page 11 that Twisted Metal 4, quote, turned the entire game history on its head, unquote. This is due to the seemingly blatant retconning of when the Twisted Metal tournaments in-universe began, as well as Calypso's power source, though that in itself has had a hard time staying 100% consistent between many games in the same continuities. Believe me, the change of Calypso's power source may not seem crazy at first when this fucker talks about it. 
But that shit made a couple continuities particularly a pain in my headless ass when I, yes, me, not him, scaled the verses. Oh my Satan. Could you not talk about power scaling for five minutes? The classic continuity is specified in the same game guide to not be considered part of the official canon by fans and official creators. With page 7 backing this idea up with a statement in the Twisted Trivia section saying that in regards to Twisted Metal 2, it did not receive a true sequel until Twisted Metal head on. This blatantly means, unlike what I've heard some fans of Twisted Metal claim, that Twisted Metal 3 and Twisted Metal 4 cannot possibly be within the same canon as Twisted Metal Head On. And honestly, this should be pretty clear with how the endings for both Twisted Metal 3 and Twisted Metal Head On both directly follow story beats from Twisted Metal 2, which, when viewed side by side, make it impossible for them to fit within the same timeline. Whatever, who cares, that continuity ended when some of the original creators got a hold of the franchise again back in 2000. They decided to go back to the darker roots of the original games, since the 989 Studio games had admittedly become almost like a cartoon, and go full gritty, dark, and fucking badass with what would be called Twisted Metal Black. My favorite canon of Twisted Metal, the Black continuity encapsulates Twisted Metal Black as well as Twisted Metal Lost which was released as a bonus feature on the Twisted Metal head-on Extra Twisted Edition game. It also has some flash animations that are dubiously canon. Lost, while not being a complete game with endings, does follow the story beats from Black with bios of characters referencing motivations and endings from Black. Interestingly enough, Twisted Metal Black is stated in the sweet tour mode of Twisted Metal head-on, to be a more realistic version of the series when compared to the other games of the franchise. The 2012 Twisted Metal Brady Games Guide again covers the history of the franchise, with page 12 and 13 discussing Twisted Metal Black. It states Black is considered to be a reboot or alternate reality of the franchise. With this idea being built upon with Twisted Metal Lost's info in regards to Black, the driver, not the game, implying Twisted Metal Black is a parallel universe to either the classic continuity or the head-on continuity. Now, to address the biggest misconception I have seen for the franchise as a whole, at least as of late, no, Twisted Metal Black doesn't inherently take place within the mind of Sweet Tooth, though admittedly there are some arguments for this. Though I do believe there are ways to explain away most of the arguments, or recontextualize them into a more interesting idea. Well, that will have to be covered in the Twisted Metal Black video. We can't be going on forever now, can we? With the talk of alternate realities, that leads us nicely into the widely considered canonical continuation of the story created in Twisted Metal and Twisted Metal 2. As in 2005, a new game titled Twisted Metal Head-On was released. Wait, 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 wait. You seriously are going to ignore Small Brawl, huh? Figures. Whatever, Body Snatcher, I'll cover it. That won't be necessary. Released in the same year as Twisted Metal Black, Twisted Metal Small Brawl, as the continuously mentioned game guide puts it, was the reimagining for a younger demographic, being the yin to Twisted Metal Black's yang. The Small Brawl continuity is a one-shot following a group of kids in an RC car competition to win a prize from the local bully, Billy Calypso. Now that you've got that out of your system, Twisted Metal Head-On, Retcon Twisted Metal 3 and Twisted Metal 4, the games by 989 Studios, out of continuity, creating what I call the aptly named Head-On continuity. Though I've also seen people refer to this as the canon Twisted Metal, which is Twisted Metal, Twisted Metal 2, and of course Twisted Metal Head On. You can picture this change in the same light to how Halloween H2O retconned every movie from the Thorn timeline after Halloween 2 out of continuity as a good comparison. More like a shitty comparison, since the Thorn timeline is goaded. 
and the 989 Studios continuity, while admittedly I did like certain aspects, was overall a nosedive in quality. Like your bodiless butt knows anything about quality, I mean, we both have seen your videos. Asshole. After Head On and its extra twisted edition, the franchise would go silent for four years until the game simply titled Twisted Metal arrived in 2012. With a fully cohesive and easy to follow storyline, along with the boosted graphics of a 7th generation console, one could easily argue Twisted Metal on the PlayStation 3 is the most cinematic of the franchise. Outside of that fact, however, one could argue this game was a bit underwhelming, as the game only consisted of four characters from the previous games outside of Calypso, with only three of those characters having campaign stories. For reference, Twisted Metal Head-On had 18 playable vehicles, and Twisted Metal Black had 12. This would be like if Mortal Kombat 1 were to come out, and the only notable characters were God Liu Kang, Human Raiden, Kung Lao, Sub-Zero, and Scorpion, with only Kang, Zero, and Scorpion being playable in the story mode, and God Liu Kang is unplayable. Just kind of fucking weird. The version of Sweet Tooth from the game is the version that appears within PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, though unlike God of War, I'm pretty sure All-Stars isn't canon to Twisted Metal. Finally, at the end of the road, we have Twisted Metal the show. Which looks like hot wet ass, but hey, I'm gonna still watch it, assuming this asshole leaves by that time. That ain't gonna happen, buddy. To keep it short, since this video has been going on for far too long at this point, mainly due to the fact someone won't let their consciousness disappear, HEY! This series, Twist and Continuities, is mainly to inform the viewer not only of the lore and story of the Twisted Metal continuity, but to explain the power of each as well. This series will go through the series chronologically, from the classic continuity to the 2012 continuity. Hopefully I can wrestle this channel back from this weasel so you don't have to listen to his annoying ass voice. While I ain't no angel, I am compared to- Anyway, if you want to keep up with a series of videos, as well as anything that may be made in between each of these, likely scaling of various verses, then please like and subscribe. Also share this video with your mother and your boss and see how long it takes for them to get a fucking reaction. If they do, it's this guy's fault. Wait, why is the camera All right, everyone. I think this is time to finish the video. Whatever this fucker says, ignore his ass. Stay frosty, you fucks. I am the Headless Glen, and I thank you for watching Twisted Continuities. <laughs>